So I'm gonna show you how to stand up a really simple mean application. And mean, of course, stands for Mongo, Express, Angular, JS, and Node. So in this video, I'm using WebStorm. I'm not generally a huge fan of IDEs, but WebStorm is a really good one, and it automates a lot of the trivial and mundane tasks that you'd have to do by hand. And also, I'm doing this tutorial on Linux, but it shouldn't matter what platform you use, because the awesome thing about the mean stack is that it's totally 100% cross-platform. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to set up some sort of project. In my case, I'm gonna go into WebStorm, I'm gonna create a brand new project. It's going to be an empty project. We're not going to use any of the WebStorm templates. I find that in general, IDE templates bring along a lot of extra dependencies and in general make the project really heavy and I don't want that. So once you've created your project or folder or what have you, you're going to need to use NPM to bring down some dependencies. Regardless of what platform you're using, whether it be Linux, Windows, or Mac, you'll need to install Node, NPM, and Mongo. So once you've got the dependencies out of the way, let's go ahead and use NPM to bring down some Node modules. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the terminal within WebStorm and I'm going to do npm install and then enter the node modules I need. In this case, we're going to need Angular. We're going to need Angular-Route. We're going to, of course, need Express. We'll need a module called Body Parser. We'll need a module called Cores, not to be confused with the trashy beer. And we'll need a way for our app to interact with Mongo, so we're going to use a package called Mongoose. Now, Mongoose can be somewhat tricky to install as it tends to require some external dependencies, specifically GIP or GYP and Kerberos. So the way I resolve these issues is I simply do npm install GYP and npm install Kerberos. Now, as you can see here, I actually have errors when I try to install those, but I simply do npm install mongoose and then suddenly everything works just fine. If you continue to run into issues, especially around Kerberos, you'll need to install a Kerberos package from your package repository. Here on Debian, which is a Linux distribution that I'm using, I just do apt-get install krb5 and it'll bring down all the dependencies I need. Now, once all the configuration and setup is out of the way, we can finally start creating our application. First thing we're going to need is an index.html file. So let's go ahead and create one. Right click the project and create new HTML file. Now a cool thing about using WebStorm is when you create new HTML files like this one, it fills in some of the boilerplate code. So let's go ahead and give this one a title. I'm gonna call this one my super rad app. And since this is an Angular app, let's go ahead and add our Angular directives. First one we'll need is ng app. We'll put it in the HTML tag and we'll go ahead and call it mean app. Then we'll need an ng controller directive. Let's go ahead and put that in the body. We're gonna call it app control. And then let's place an empty div in the body. Now you notice that WebStorm is complaining that the name app control is unresolved. And that's because we haven't created our Angular module or the controller. So let's go ahead and do that now. So in the project panel, we'll wanna click the project folder and then click new JavaScript file. Let's just keep things simple and call this one app.js. Now you'll notice WebStorm went ahead and put in a comment here. I actually don't know what this says, but I do know that we don't need it. So let's go ahead and wipe it away and replace it with var mean app equals angular.module. And then we'll need a parentheses mean app, which is the name of our variable. And then we'll pass an empty array. And then a line or two below that, we'll wanna go ahead and use our mean app dot controller. We'll pass the name of the controller in, in this case is going to be app control. So let's go back to the index and you notice that now WebStorm is saying that app control is a valid variable. That's because we just created it. Now, a really cool and common use of Angular is to create single page apps. You can accomplish this by using a directive called ngView. So let's go ahead and create a page and let's name this one home.html. And let's make this really simple. We'll remove all the boilerplate code. We'll put a single div in here and let's go ahead and do h2 and we'll say something silly like this is one mean tutorial. Now in WebStorm, you can go ahead and right click your HTML file. And in this case, we can simply say run home.html. And there you have it. This is one mean tutorial. Let's go back to the index and let's add our ng view. We're gonna put ng view into that empty div that we added in the body. Now I actually made a mistake here at first. Make sure you add ng view into the element, not into the div itself. We'll also need to add references to the scripts we're gonna use. Even though we used npm to pull in the node modules, we still need to reference them in the index. So we'll add three script tags, angular.js and angular route.js. And the last one is going to point to our app.js. Now that we're done with the index, let's go ahead and switch back to the app.js. We'll need to build and configure our route provider, which is what the ng view will use to route us to the correct page, the correct page being the home.html. So let's go ahead and create a route provider. We'll add a couple new lines underneath our main Angular module, and we'll do main app.config with a function where we pass in the route provider. Now we'll also want to pass ng route in quotes in the empty array in our Angular module. This is the special sauce that makes it all work. And then under that, we'll do route provider dot win, and then we'll pass in a slash, which is the root of the website. Now in the brackets, we'll want to add the template URL 
which is our home.html, and then we're gonna need to pass it a controller, which is of course our one and only app control. Now it goes without saying that most Angular apps are far more complicated than this, but in this very simple and very contrived example, this will work just fine. Now time for the fun part. Let's watch Angular work its magic. We'll go to the index, we'll right click it and hit run. Now notice that even though we're on the index, Angular is showing us what's on the home page that we created. Angular makes routing pretty freaking easy. So now let's spruce up the home page a bit. Let's go to the home HTML file. Let's go ahead and add an input field. We'll call the type text and let's go ahead and add a button and we'll go ahead and call this button submit. Now we'll run our application from the index file and now we can see we have a new input field and a new button. We can type in the input field, we can click the button, but of course they don't do anything because they're not wired to anything. Now we're going to use a new Angular directive called ng-model. ng-model allows us to bind data to places. But first, even before we do that, let's go ahead and use an Angular directive on the button called ng-click. We'll have ng-click execute a function called submit. Now notice that we're doing app.submit. App, in this case, is the actual controller. So we need to go back to the index, and in the ng-controller we need to say app control as app. So that way in the button, and anywhere else in the application, we can simply say app dot and we can grab any function that's in the controller. In this case, we're getting the submit function. We're gonna use the submit function to send the data that we put into the input field over to Mongo. So let's go ahead and create a stub for app.submit. So let's go to app.js, and within the controller, go ahead and type app.submit equals function, and that's it. Now our app.submit function is waiting to be hooked up to the server, which we actually don't have yet. So now let's go ahead and create a new JavaScript file. This one we're just gonna call server.js just keeping it simple. This is already a super contrived example, so no need to get too fancy. So the first thing you're gonna need to do in your server.js file is you're gonna need to require a whole bunch of stuff. So this is pretty tedious to type, so I'm gonna use some editing magic to make it go a little faster, but basically you're gonna need body parser, mongoose, express, Coors, not the beer, and you'll need to create a local variable called app, which is the actual express app, and then you do app.use Coors, app.use body parser. Once you've done all that, we're gonna go ahead and connect to our Mongo instance. Now make sure that Mongo's running, because if it's not, obviously this won't work. So go ahead and do mongoose.connect, and then pass in your Mongo database. It's probably going to be something like mongodb colon slash slash localhost, and then the name of the database you want to use. At this point, the database probably doesn't exist, and that's fine. If it doesn't exist, it'll be created for you. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and call it things. Once we've created our connection, we're going to want to create a model. So under the connection, we'll create a local variable called thing model. So in my case, it's going to be thing model equals mongoose.model. In the parentheses, we're going to pass a string called thing. And then the second parameter is your schema. We're going to keep the schema really simple. We're going to say thing is a string. And that's it. That's our model. And of course, we're going to need to give express a port to listen on. So at the bottom, we'll go ahead and do app.listen and we'll assign it port 3000. Now we're going to have our server handle our HTTP requests. That's how we're going to get our data from that input field on our web app all the way into Mongo. And then eventually it's going to come back from Mongo onto our web page. So we're going to need two methods, post and get. Let's go ahead and start with post. Underneath where you've declared your model, go ahead and do app.post, and in the parentheses we'll do slash add. Second parameter, we're going to pass in a function, we're going to have a request and a response, and within the post we're going to declare a new variable called thing. The thing is going to be equal to the request.body. Body.thing is referring to our model that we declared above. Under the variable called thing, we're going to have another variable called thingdoc. This is our document that we're persisting into Mongo. So we're going to call this one var thingdoc equals new thing model. Then we'll pass the schema, which is thing is a thing. And then under that, we'll do thing.doc dot save function. And then within the brackets, we'll do res dot send. And that's our post method. So let's go back to app.js and let's wire up our app.submit function. And of course, for HTTP requests to work, you'll need to pass the HTTP provider service into the controller. So before we start the wiring, we'll need to make sure that we have a local variable within our controller called var app is equal to this. And then we're gonna have another variable, which is a URL. And that one is gonna be HTTP colon slash slash localhost and then the port that you used. We're also gonna need a way to capture the things from Mongo when they come back. So let's go ahead and create an empty array. Let's do app dot things from Mongo is equal to an empty array. So finally, getting down into the app submit function, we'll go ahead and do dollar sign HTTP dot post. In the parentheses, we'll use the URL, which is the variable above, and then we'll wanna add in quotes slash add. And then the second parameter is going to be our schema, which is thing is a thing. Now, of course, the submit button needs to know 
what exactly a thing is, so it's going to have to receive a parameter. And the only way for that to work is if we bind ng model to the input field. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go to home.html, we'll go to the input field, and within the input tag, let's go ahead and do ng model is equal to app.thing. And then in the submit button, you'll see that we've put app.thing there. Now, we're going to go to the index.html and we're going to right click. And in this case, I'm actually going to debug using Firefox. I tend to like Firefox's developer tools way better than Chrome's developer tools. Now in the developer tools, we're gonna go ahead and open up the network tab. We're gonna type some gibberish into the input field. We're gonna hit submit, and you'll see that we get a post 200 to localhost 3000. That tells us that Express is doing its job and it's sending the data that we put into the input field into Mongo. Now you'll notice that after we hit the submit button, the text we entered into the input field stays. That's kind of crappy, so let's go ahead and clean that out. Let's go back to the app.j and the very last line in app.submit should be app.thing, which refers to the model that we're using in home.html. And we'll go ahead and have app.thing equal an empty string. Now when we go back and hit the submit button, the input field is clear again. So now that we've got the post method out of the way, let's write a function so that Express can handle the get method for us. So let's go back to server.js and we'll simply write a function called app.get. The first parameter will be slash. The second parameter will be a function, which will be the request and response. In the brackets, we'll have thingmodel.find. Find will have a function with a parameters of error, the second parameter being things, and then finally we'll have res.send, and in the parentheses we'll have things. So what's going to happen is that the get method is going to query Mongo, and it's going to pull everything that it finds in the things model and send it back to our application. Now we need to tell our application to do something with that. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to the home page and let's go ahead and add another button. Let's call this one show and change the ng click directive to call a function called app.show. Of course, we'll need to create a function called app.show. So let's go to app.js and we'll create a function called app.show. And then in the body, we'll do http.get URL dot success and then in the brackets we'll do app dot things from mongo dot push and then we'll push what comes back from mongo into the array now we'll also need to add a new div that contains the directive ng repeat because that's how we're going to show what's coming back from mongo on the web page now in this directive we'll have ng repeat equals thing in app dot things from mongo which is the array in the controller and then inside the div we'll simply show thing and then when we go to index let's run it We'll type something random into the text field. We'll hit submit, and it is displaying every single thing that comes back from Mongo onto the screen. But that's not what we want. We want only the most recent item, and in that item, we only want the value of thing. So it's actually easiest to go back to the server for this. So we'll go to the get method on the server, and we'll create a new variable. We'll call it last thing. Last thing is equal to things.pop. Now what this is going to do, it's going to grab the last index in the array. And then finally, we'll change the parameter in the send to last thing so that it only sends the last index in the array back to the application. So that means that it'll send the object from Mongo, but we only want the value of thing. So we'll go to our show function and where we're pushing the parameter into the things from Mongo array, we'll simply do thing dot thing. Boy, these names are awesome. So now we go back to the web page and we type, I'm just a thing. We submit, we push show. And just like that, we get what we just sent to Mongo back and we've displayed it on the web page. So now what we've done, we've taken Angular, Mongo, Express, and Node, we've put them all together and we've created a very simple, very basic single page application that is taking user input from a web page, sending it to a Mongo backend, and then retrieving it and displaying the data on a web page. All in about 10 minutes. The mean stack is pretty freaking cool. Now if you're anything like me, you're really picky about styling. Now this home page has no styling. We can fix that really easy. In fact, we can use a simple library to make this homepage look like a million bucks, or at least we'll make it look something like Google's material design. So let's go back to our index, and there we're going to add a link. The link is going to be a style sheet, and the href is going to point to a CSS library called Materialize. I'll post the link in the description. Now all we've done here is added the CSS library to our application. Now let's go ahead and run it. Look how much difference that made. We have a different typeface, and the input box is quite a bit different looking, but it gets better. So now let's go to the home page. Now the root div, let's go ahead and add a class to that, and let's call it container. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and add classes to the buttons. The submit button we'll call the class button orange, and the show button we'll call that class button blue. Now reload the page, and look at the difference that made. 
Now, I hope that everybody enjoyed this tutorial as much as I liked making it, but there are a couple bugs in this application, and hopefully you've actually stumbled across them. The great thing about Angular is that it's very easy to test, or at least in general, Angular is built with testing in mind, so that it's easy if that's what you want to do. The main bug, and arguably the easiest bug to fix, is around ng-repeat. The problem is that if you add duplicate values into the input field and try to submit them, Angular will throw an exception, telling you that duplicates are not allowed. Now, what I would love to see is for folks that followed this tutorial, write a JavaScript unit test or simply fix the bug outright. Let me know how you did it in the comments. Or even better, try to post a video of your own. I'd love to watch it. And I hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.